Hello and welcome to GUTV. I'm Caroline Rourke. Now you may have noticed that we're not broadcasting at our normal time today and that is because we have a very special episode. It's Fall Family Weekend here at Gonzaga and uh, we've got a special live audience here to watch the show today of parents. Say hello guys. We've got folks in the production control room and we've also got some fr friends and family members helping out in here on cameras and on uh, cables. We also have one very special guest who I would uh, like to introduce you to, and that is my dad, Michael. My dad came all the way from Bothell, Washington today to join me here on the Anchor Desk, and he's excited to give broadcasting a shot for the first time. I'm also equally excited to see him give broadcasting a shot for the first time. How are you feeling, Dad? I'm feeling great, Care. No nerves? No nerves at all. Ready to walk a mile in your shoes. <laughs> All right. Well, we've had a blast this week getting ready for the show and writing scripts and planning things. Uh, so I will let you just take it away. All righty. Here we go. <laughs> I'm very pleased to be joining everyone at GUTV today to get an inside look at all the planning, hard work, and late nights that I've been hearing about for the last three years that go into a successful broadcast. I've been watching this since you were a freshman, but there's plenty I'm sure that I don't know about filming, writing, and production that you and your classmates pull off each week. I can't wait to hear more about it. Well, Dad, lucky for you, we have the answers to all of those questions. GUTV's Lauren Banis sat down with broadcasting students this week to find out what it takes to get to this point. For broadcasting students, the average day in class might be a little different than it is for students in other departments. Instead of classrooms, we sit in TV studios. And instead of tests, we're graded on video productions and editing. But how does this all happen? How do we learn what it takes to make a clean and informative television show? Well, for that, we start from the ground up. We start by giving students a broad overview about what it means to communicate in the visual digital narrative arena. That means being able to work as a member of a crew. It means to be uh, strictly, strictly adherent to deadlines. Um, it means to just be able to focus all of your energy and resources on one task. It's such a practical major. They literally, first day we were in the studio learning about how to work the cameras, like day one, out of the gate. And I just think it's such an exciting experience to be able to get your hands on what you're going to do in the future, whereas like a lot of other classes you sit down and you like learn things out of a textbook or you practice a lot of problems. But with this, you're ready for the real world after maybe a month of this class. It's not necessarily about just knowing facts, but it's really applying what you learn here to real life experiences. From 203 to advanced, students are pushed to try new things, whether it's their first time on camera. I'm your host, Corinne Cahill. And or a nerve wracking directing job, in the broadcast department, every day is a learning opportunity. On a good day, you watch some TV, you get to critique some news, but on a not so good day, you're filming for a couple of hours and then you're editing until the sun goes down and then up again. It's really exciting. We just kind of set up the studio, but we never really know exactly what to expect. I mean, every day I learn something new. Every day I get challenged. And so I come not feeling nervous, as Dan would say. I feel energized. Those that you learn are very much oriented towards exactly what you're going to do. I mean, you can be a director. You can help produce a show. You can anchor. You can, you know, do what you want to do. And you can really focus on that. Every student has a different desired end goal. No matter what career a student is working towards, the broadcast department helps provide them with opportunities and skills that will help them succeed wherever they decide to go in life. Lauren Banis, GUTV. Well, thanks, Lauren, and thanks to all the students that helped her with that package. I absolutely know exactly what you're talking about. I've definitely spent uh, many early mornings in the broadcasting building. I think the janitorial staff knew me by name last semester. Um, Dad, did you ever have any late night experiences when you were in college? A few late nights and a few blurry mornings, Kara. <laughs> well, that's a story for another time. Um, now, one of the things that's really important here at GUTV is social media. Um, it's uh, become a really important part of engaging with our viewers in a modern journalism uh, setting, uh, being able to connect with them on a platform that they can understand. And, uh, and speaking of social media, I know that when I joined Facebook, uh, you and mom were a little iffy about it, <laughs> uh, my be being out there on a, on a social platform. But I've noticed that you have become quite the aficionado of Facebook lately, and I think it's only fair that we show our viewers uh, your recent profile picture changed. <laughs> can you tell me a little more about this? 
Well, I was seeking inspiration earlier this week for today's event, and I thought, who better than five-time Emmy winner Ron Burgundy to provide <laughs> that imitation, inspiration? <laughs> and Ron, I believe, was a 77 graduate of the GUT program, <laughs> is that right? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, well, in the past few years, social media has become really important for us to learn. Uh, it's a really good way for us to get feedback from our viewers and kind of learn about like, what works, what doesn't. Uh, and it's also a great way to have our viewers get to know us. Uh, so now we'll head on over to the Opila suite where Doug Taylor is waiting to correspond with some of our viewers over social media. Doug? Thank you, Caroline. One of our favorite things to do here at GUTV is interact with our viewers. So this week, we gave them a test. We tweeted out baby pictures of current GUTV students and asked you, the viewer, to guess who they were. So let's see how things turned out. Here's our first picture. Looks like someone mistook a spaghetti bowl for a hat here. Uh, and you guys did get this one right. This is Aaron Robinson. Looking good, Aaron. Our next one gave you a little bit of trouble. This beautiful 90s child is not Nick Joyce, like some of you guessed. It is your very own Scott Weller. And you also got this one right. This beautiful, shining, happy East Coast baby is Taylor Horney from Yarmouth, Maine. I think that the Mariner's hat was, was a bit of a dead giveaway for this person, but you did get this one right. This is Nick Joyce. Uh, are you wearing pants, Nick? Curly hair? Oh, looks like someone made a mess on the counter, but this has to be Caroline Rourke. You also got this one right. That's all I have for you today. Four out of five? That's not too bad, really. Uh, we're going to take a short break, but after the break, we're going to come back with Scott Horney on weather. I'm Doug Taylor, and this is GUTV. Human is special and important because it creates this community of acceptance and love um, that's based on faith, um, whether that's you're struggling in faith or you're excited about it, we just have a space for you to come and share and um, be in community with other people. Students should go on the retreats to get away um, from the busyness of life and schoolwork um, to rest and be filled up. Um, we have weekly things that students can be a part of that um, also help out with that, with being filled up with uh, getting away from just, yeah, the busyness of life. But retreats like force you to be in that. Um, and it's an incredible way of meeting friends that you've never met on campus or um, branching out and hearing from other people's perspectives. We love people and we have tea and cookies sometimes and we're really nice so come and say hey. Hey I'm Taylor Crowdeville. Um, I'm a senior this year and I'm this year's GSBA president. Um, I'm a biology major on pre-med track with a minor in Spanish um, and I'm excited for the year. We have kind of a broad range of what we're looking at. Everything from security, like making people feel like they're safe on and off campus. And also relations with Logan Neighborhood, between Logan Neighborhood and Gonzaga students. I think a lot of times there's this duality between Gonzaga students and Logan Neighborhood, where in all reality we're all living in the same space, we're all community. And lastly, just being able to live through this Hemmingson Center because uh, President Bacola has said it a thousand times, talking about how this is the student's building, like we need to be able to make this our own. And if it isn't already apparent, <laughs> I think we're already on the way there. So I think um, those are probably my four big goals for the year. Welcome back to GUTV. I'm Michael Rourke. And I'm Caroline Rourke. And today we're putting our parents to the test and having them partake in our show. My dad's been doing a great job up here on the anchor desk so far. And now we're going to test out another GUTV dad. Scott Horney is joining us today all the way from Yarmouth, Maine. Scott was born and raised, though, in the suburbs of New York, which begs that age-old question, Red Sox fan or Yankees fan. Today he'll be doing his best to deliver the weather from the inland northwest. Take it away, Scott. All right. Thank you, Michael and Caroline. 
Well, you know, it's really great to be here. It's have a great time. Um, my daughter, Taylor, is executive producing today's program. We're probably not supposed to do anything like this, but I'm going to give her a big shout out and say, you're doing a great job, honey. Yeah. yeah. If you know Taylor or if you don't know Taylor, that look right there was a look of complete confidence. No matter what happens up here right now, she's going to let me buy her dinner tonight. I promise you that. All right, let's take a look at the weather. Uh, if you're out and about today, join the first day of fall family weekend. It's an absolutely beautiful fall day. Temps in the low 70s, sunny skies, light breeze. Just a great day to get out and enjoy campus with your kids. This evening, it's going to be cooling down into the 40s. So if you're going to be no taking another walk through campus or maybe enjoying one of the restaurants downtown, you might need a light jacket just to keep yourself warm. Sunday, uh, highs in the 60s, full-on sunshine, another carbon copy of today. So really, enjoy time on campus with your family. Enjoy the city of Spokane. It's going to be beautiful. Uh, extended forecast for the rest of the week. Looking sunny and dry, seasonably warm temperatures, so uh, expect no surprises. It should be a great week. Uh, one thing I also wanted to do was shift gears a little bit. Since Taylor and I live so far away, 3,000 miles back in Yarmouth, Maine, we thought we'd give you the hometown forecast. And uh, Yarmouth, Maine is a beautiful picture of, uh, of our coastline. Um, the, the weekend forecast for Yarmouth, not too different from what you've got here in Spokane. Uh, highs in the 50s, low 60s, mostly sunny. It's a great weekend. Um, I'm just going to say, that it's too bad the Patriots aren't playing the Dallas Cowboys at Foxborough today or tomorrow because it's going to be a beautiful football day. Oh, wait a minute. I probably shouldn't have said anything about the Patriots. I know it's a sore subject around here. I'm really sorry about that. Anyway, the rest of the week at home is looking great. Maybe a few showers on Tuesday, but Monday, Wednesday, and beyond look seasonably warm. Not too much precipitation, so uh, you know we're looking forward to getting home to some nice weather. That's all I've got for today. Back to you. Thanks, Scott, for that wonderful but somewhat deflated forecast. <laughs> Caroline, I know you're looking to go into the news world, but I'm curious to know what other GUTV alum are up to. The Zags, of course, make everyone a sports fan, and I'm guessing some alums have combined that passion for athletics with a passion for broadcasting. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Dad. Um, sports broadcasting is a big draw for a lot of students uh, here at GUTV, and uh, our classmate Scott Weller had the chance to meet up with some alumni right here in Spokane who are doing just that. SWX, Spokane, Washington's all sports and weather channel. For a few GUTV alumni, it's not far from where it all began. You're watching another edition of Gonzaga This Week. I'm Lindsay Joy. I'm Colin McQuilkin. Coming up after the break, I'll let you know, are these gray skies going to stick around? Hello and welcome to Clash of the Comics on GUTV. My name is Stephen Carr. Just about every weekend in the fall, you can see this mobile production trailer in and around Spokane. Now, I had a chance to catch up with Lindsay, Steve, and Colin to see what they've done to be successful in the sports broadcasting industry. <laughs> Lindsay's key to success for sports broadcasting was repetition, getting to shoot many sporting events during her time at Gonzaga. She did note one key difference between her time at GUTV and the professional world. I think the biggest thing is it's just, it's every day. It's every day at 5, 6, 10, 10, 30, and 11. I mean, it's every single day you have five deadlines a day. Um, GUTV, obviously, you do have those deadlines and you are, you know, you're not trying to spend a week on a package, but you sort of have a little more time to work on things, whereas, you know, out, out in the professional world, it really is, you know, every day, no matter what, you have your shows and you have to fill those three minutes and it, like, it comes at you fast. Colin has seen that day-to-day -day grind firsthand, going from a KHQ production assistant to an SWX live remote director. He had some wise words for GUTV students who are eager to join the industry. You've got to reach out. You've got to make the connections. You've got to work hard. And GUTV has done a great job getting you ready for that. Send your tape to everyone. You are not too good for a job. Maybe you have to start out in a low market and work your way up. But a job's a job, and you will work your butt off, and you've, you've learned the tools. Just start sharpening them, and work, work, work. Stephen knows all about going out and getting jobs. As a freelance live sports broadcaster, he has used every skill he learned at GUTV to get whatever job comes his way. I think the nice thing about GUTV is that it makes you a well-rounded uh, individual when you come out of the program. You kind of learn how to do everything. Look, direct, produce, camera, talent, whatever it is, you get to do everything. And I think in sports broadcasting, I've done a whole bunch of different things already in my two or three years that I've been uh, in the industry. So being able to see and do different things at GUTV has helped me see and do different things in the world of sports broadcasting. That's it for sports. Scott Weller, GUTV. Go. 
Great piece, Scott, and very cool to see sports and broadcasting intertwine. I think that could be you someday, Caroline. You know, uh, only if it means working for the Boston Red Sox. Yeah, I'm afraid the Red Sox need on-field talent more than they need a broadcaster <laughs> right now. Well, a girl could dream. Coming up next, we'll check in with a few other alumni, and we'll sit down with current student Josh Shield. We'll be answering questions about the life of a broadcasting student. You're watching GTV. I'm Greg Talbot. Go Zags. Oh. Oh. Go Zags. Go Zags. Hello and welcome back to GUTV. I'm Caroline Rourke. And I'm her dad, Michael Rourke, and today has been a lot of fun learning about broadcasting and whatnot. But as a dad, I have some important questions to ask besides news. Like, what else can you do with a degree in broadcasting? Specifically, can you make money? <laughs> That's my, my biggest concern, too, and it's a really great question. Uh, as we've seen in the uh, packages we've seen today, there's a lot more to broadcasting than just being on camera. Uh, it's my favorite thing to do, but uh, there's definitely a lot of other, opp other opportunities. And here at GTV, we really try to uh, learn about all of those different ones. It's a really unique part of our program. Today, to get a job in, in journalism, you have to be what we call a multimedia journalist. So rather than being hired for one specific position, you're expected to be fluent in all aspects of broadcast production. One of the positions that I struggle with the most personally is editing. I much prefer producing and being on camera. But a lot of my classmates actually really enjoy the creative side, uh, which we call post-production. GUTV's Josh Scheel, who prefers to be behind the camera, had the chance to explore the world of post-production with some of our alumni. But before that, we want to introduce you to a few other GUTV alumni. I had the chance to meet with some very special people who are working in post-production. This is not the news, but it was created by GUTV alums who decided to take a different path with their degrees. Here at Jada, one of our alumni, Quint Mason, makes TV commercials like this. In compassion. Committed to personal. He says care. much of his success is from his time at GUTV. My broadcasting degree is everything. I mean, the, the lessons I learned at Gonzaga, especially the lessons in storytelling, are huge. We use that every day here. Like being able to cut through an interview quickly and being able to make a story out of a bunch of disjointed questions in a row, I, I, that was a skill that I plainly did not have before I came to Gonzaga. <laughs> and now, now I feel like I can really put together an interview and tell a good story, and that's because of what I learned through the broadcasting program. Clint's view on broadcasting is not a unique one. After talking to many alumni, I found that they have the exact same opinion of the program. And while I'm not an alumni yet, I can say that the program has given me the confidence to do what I love. And for those of you who are still in the program, there are a few tips that Clint would like to share. What have helped me the most, especially com coming up like in my early years through Gonzaga, is just keep making content. 
especially if you're going into production, like you will fall back on that like after you graduate and you need to find a job and you go, oh, I have all these videos made for me right here. Just keep making stuff and keep releasing it and getting feedback on it. And if you just keep that drive or just keep trying to remind yourself, make another video and just, you might not think that you're making the best video you've ever made, but by putting together just a bunch in a row, you, you, your quality just keeps going up. I had such a great time getting to interview some of our wonderful alums, but now I'm going to be on the other side of things and get the chance to be interviewed. So, Bernadette Quinn, what would you like to know? Well, Josh, I'm very excited to talk to you today because actually my son, Andrew Quinn, has just become a freshman in the broadcast media program <laughs> and he is operating a camera here today. Hi. <laughs> I want to know what made you choose broadcast media. Oh, what made me choose this? Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't choose it originally, and I wish I would have because I would have probably graduated by now. But uh, <laughs> so uh, I started off as a computer science major. I did that for like three weeks, and uh, after like being in the in the dungeon for like a couple hours, I was like, I can't do this anymore. I want to talk to people. So naturally, I went to brought. Nope, I went to teaching first. Oh, I, uh, okay. I went and I uh, taught at a middle school for student teaching for half a semester, and uh, it broke me real fast. It uh, having all those kids. Uh, I'm from a. Pri I've been to only private schools for my whole life, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, I went to a public middle school, and. Uh, this wasn't used to Different. it. Different. So right around that time, I uh, was in this comedy troupe called the Boone Street Hooligans, and we did a little sketch here at GUTV. I did not even know this existed, but when I walked in, I saw how everyone like running around and everyone like checking checking mics, and it was just so cool. And at that moment, I was like, I want to do this because it, it came at the exact moment. So what ended up happening is I went in and I talked to Dan, and he just has this way with words to make you mm -hmm. believe mm -hmm. that like broadcasting is a great thing to do. So I just right there signed up for it and uh, haven't looked back. It's a little unfortunate I I haven't graduated yet. I should have graduated last semester. But when, uh, <laughs> so when do you plan to graduate? Oh, okay. Are you my mom now? Uh, I am a mom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm graduating in December. This is like this is one of the only shaking. Thank you. Uh, so now you've finally finished up in the niche that's for you. Mm. What's the best thing and what's the worst thing about broadcast media? Oh my gosh. Is Dan watching this or <laughs> Yeah, he's listening okay. in somewhere. Oh man. Uh, so the best thing is is like actually this. This is like for the first like hour beforehand, it's kind of like really nervous and not nervous. You're energized. Sorry, um, you get really energized and you don't know if everything's gonna work out. There's always like four problems. One of the mics might cut out, and it's just like but being able to solve those problems yourself and be able to put out like a great product for people to watch, and then afterwards you just get this like sense of like I did something. Um, I guess the worst part is. Uh, I mean, I, I, even like the bad parts, I kind of enjoy. Even mm -hmm. like the parts where like you complain about them. I'm sure my my fellow classmates uh, will agree with me. So you you sometimes would complain like, man, that that package is due tomorrow. This sucks. I'm gonna be up all <laughs> night. But while you're being up all night, you're like with your compatriots editing stuff together, and that's like some of the best times I've ever had here. And you is, really are energized. Yo, yeah. <laughs> There's like, I just know like before a show that like Tuesday before a show that studio or that lab computer lab. It's just full of broadcasting students trying to cram in those packages and finish them up. And usually we're all running around like that looks like that looks pretty good. That does not look good. It's just real fun, you know. One of the things that concerns me, as I know Michael referred to earlier, getting a job in this industry. What makes you stand out from everybody else here? Oh, what makes me stand out? Mm -hmm. um, oh man. <laughs> Uh, thank you for asking that. That's a great interview question for like actually getting a job. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so usually when I someone says that is uh, the one thing that makes me stand out is I have a pretty good sense of humor. Um, another thing is uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay, you say you have a good sense of humor. How can you translate that into the business world of broadcasting? Okay, so that's there we go. Thank you. Uh, so usually what that ends up being is uh, the, the broadcasting is really high stress and one thing that we really 
try to do is not let the stress get to us. So uh, usually uh, what ends up happening in classes is we, we're like, oh, something fell apart. Like something fell through. We can't, we're not going to be able to do this anymore. And you, okay. And then we can f you can feel the tension in the room kind of mm -hmm, getting up mm -hmm. there. And uh, I usually just like, oh, I'll be fine. And I'm like, <laughs> I'll do it. Or uh, I usually, I'm, I allow myself to be the punching bag for a few things. Uh, not that, that sounds bad, but I'll be the one to get yelled at. If the mic's bad, it's my fault, and uh, I don't really feel bad about that. Um, yeah, so I think I'm pretty sure that's all the time we have for today. But you know what? If you want to answer, ask me any questions after this, feel free. I will be uh, happy to. So uh, thank you, Vernet, for coming. And uh, thank you for talking to me. Now I know what it's like to be uh, to be interviewed. And I don't know. Now I feel bad for all those people I've interviewed <laughs> over the years. Um, so that's all we have for our fall family weekend show. And uh, tune in next Wednesday for uh, the Hemison Student Center to talk about the impact it's had on campus. If you have any questions about the new Student Center, make sure you tweet it out at GUTV Zags, and your questions may be answered on air. We'll see you next week, and I'm Josh Scheel. And on behalf of everyone else here at GUTV, we want to thank you guys all for coming. We had a blast planning for our parents' show this weekend. And uh, before we head out, you ready, guys? We're ready. Three. Two, one. You stay classy, Gonzaga. And spring became the summer. Who'd have believed you'd come along? Hand touching hands, reaching out. Touching me, touching you Sweet Caroline Good times never seem so